Gatorade has made a patch that will tell you just what you're losing when you sweat. That way, you can know exactly what you need to put back in to be at your best. But can Gatorade really do all that? With a sticker? We are uh, 5.18 miles into the run for today. Goal for today is to run a 10K. I did go and swim right before this. So I'm in my second workout for today, but I'm getting nervous because this Gatorade patch that measures sweat fills up as you go. And they warned that you're not supposed to fill it up. So it can't be like a super, super long sweat session. Now I thought since this was just gonna be a 10K run easy, it wouldn't be a problem, but it's pretty humid today. So the sweat is filling up this thing. Hopefully I can get back and finish the run before the patch runs out. All right, finished the workout. Came in, what's that? Crazy bug. Finished the workout, came in with some patch to spare, I guess. All right, let's take a look at this, see what it says. Six point five zero miles, nine minutes, twelve seconds per mile, going for a nice, easy run along the Heritage Trail in Iowa, running starting at the Dyersville end of the trail and running east, and then heading back for an out and back, and taking a Gatorade sweat patch out for this run. Uh, before I tell you about how the sweat patch did and what results it gives me. I do want to go some disclosures. This is a product that I purchased myself. No one sent it to me. No one's paying me to make this video. And no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Gatorade sweat patch. So the idea with this patch is that it's a sticker that you put on uh, and you adhere it to the inside of your arm. And uh, it looks like there is a reservoir in here. And as you sweat, it kind of pushes a certain kind of fluid throughout like all these different channels. So it starts to kind of fill up with color over the period of time that you're sweating for the run. And then after that, you take a picture of it uh, with the app. You have to download a specific GX Gatorade app and it scans it and it can tell based on how much you filled up in terms of sweat and what I think what color that sweat is. And that's why I think that on this patch there is a little section over here that is i think kind of like a color standard so that way uh, no matter what the lighting is uh, for when you do take that picture of that patch it can still kind of figure out how i think that's how it figures out how salty uh, your sweat is but it takes that and then it crunches the numbers uh, does whatever it does on its back end and it gives you some recommendations now one of the things that i did have to do was i did my scan twice because I was really worried that I was gonna fill up this thing with sweat over the course of my hour long run. I really didn't think it was gonna be a problem, but as I started running, I was like, this thing is filling up quickly and it starts to kind of go exponentially quicker in terms of how much it fills up because I think of just, just the way that your body starts to sweat. 
And so as I was editing this footage, I noticed that um, the scan that I had taken of the patch had filled up, which wasn't the case when I ended the run. So in the time that it took me to stop at the car at the end of my run, and then like open the back door to the car and then sit in the trunk and kind of get the app all sorted out, it had gone from not full to full. So it just keeps filling up over time. So I think an important thing is to be able to get that phone out and scan it right away, or I guess take it off of you. I don't know if it still fills up when it's off of your forearm, but you gotta get that scan right away. So I was able to fortunately use the footage that I had taken of this run to be able to kind of do a scan again. So instead of scanning the sticker on my arm, I scanned it with like using my phone, looking up at my computer footage uh, of the sticker immediately at the end of the run. So that's where my numbers are coming from today. And here's the numbers I got. For me, for that hour long run, I got a fluid loss of 36 ounces of fluid lost, which I think is a number that they're backing out from a sweat rate. And so again, with that tracing kind of getting more and more full, it figures out that I'm losing 1,074 milliliters per hour and I ran for almost exactly an hour. So I lost about like a liter uh, of sweat, which correlates to about 36 ounces, I think is, is where it's coming from. And I think based on the color of that um, sticker tracing that I got, uh, it says that I'm losing about 435 to 895 milligrams per liter of sodium per liter of sweat loss. So for me, that's 435 milligrams to 895 milligrams of so sodium lost in the hour because I lose about a liter of sweat an hour, according to this. Now, the thing that was surprised me about it, now I, I have no idea if like those numbers are high or low. They didn't surprise me one way or the other. What did surprise me is that based on all that, it categorized me as a, um, a low sweater, which I always thought myself as a higher or a heavy sweater and a salty sweater. But it, it says that I was neither of those two things. So my sweat, like the amount that I'm sweating wasn't that much, which was surprising because it was a pretty humid day and I felt like I sweat a lot. And then uh, it said that my salt, my sweat wasn't that salty, which again is surprising because I thought that I was losing a lot of sodium uh, in my running and Previously, I've been kind of trying to compensate for that by making sure I have a lot of salt in my gels or my electrolytes are getting replenished as I'm doing my run. So uh, those were some uh, little surprises that I had there. But ultimately, I don't think that those surprises made a huge difference based on the recommendations that it gives me, right? So then it says like for future activities that you're doing that are gonna be like this, and this was an easy run, for about an hour, which is, that's about most of my runs. So it's saying that for another run like this, given these conditions as well, and this level of intensity, I should be making sure I get four ounces of fluid beforehand. And during the workout, I should be taking in 36 ounces of fluid, which for me seems like a lot. I didn't bring any fluid with me on this run and I felt fine. Uh, and I don't think it's one of those things where, you know, I know a lot of people like to train, not dehydrated, but train without fluids. Uh, or without carrying stuff or without you know taking on fluid during their runs uh, for what there's a variety of kind of rationales for that but um, there was none of that applied here I just was like it's an hour run I don't need to bring fluid with me for an easy run uh, but it's saying I should have taken in 36 ounces of fluid that's a lot of fluid and I don't think that I would bring that much fluid for a run two to three times as long um, given similar kind of intensity. So if I was going for an easy, really long run, um, just an easy pace for like 15 to 20 miles, I don't think I'd bring 36 ounces of fluid, you know, even on a summer day. So that was a bit of a surprise. And that's one of the numbers that I think is a little bit goofy. Um, but it did say that in another run like this, I should be replenishing 351 milligrams of sodium. And that's a number that makes a little bit more sense. Notwithstanding the fact that it told me that I'm not a heavy volume sweater and I'm not a salty sweater, it's still giving me a number that's about where I thought I should be in terms of replenishing salts. So for me, for events that are longer than like two hours, a lot of times I'm either bonking because I'm hitting the wall because I've gone out too hard and I've burned all my sugars um, or my glycogen stores more specifically and or um, not topping up on my electrolytes and I feel like I'm just losing too much salt and not replenishing enough back in. So I tend to look for 200 to 400 milligrams of sodium per hour if I'm going for like a race that's gonna be longer than a half marathon distance. And I feel like some of the struggles that I have with those longer races, marathon and up, 
are because I haven't been putting in that number, uh, 200 to 400 milligrams of sodium per hour. So this is kind of like a good kind of double check of uh, making sure that, or a reminder and reinforcement that, yeah, I do need to make sure that I'm staying on top of those things. So that was uh, an interesting number. And I think that's gonna be helpful for me going forward. Not as kind of like, you know, gospel truth, but as kind of like a benchmark, let's try that for some of our longer training runs as we start getting into some marathon training and see how I feel when I'm, when I'm doing that. And then if I'm doing more of a workout or a race type intensity for longer efforts, then maybe I need to bump that up a bit. And it just gives me a starting point of where I can play with going forward. And that's why I feel like this patch is pretty useful. It's also telling me how many carbs I should have been taking in during the run. And it said I should have taken in 30 carbs, 30 grams of carbs during the run, which for me sounds about right for an easy run. You know, I don't think that I, you know, so they say these days that for a race, you should be taking in 60 grams of carbs per hour if your body can handle that much. 30 grams seems to be about a number that makes kind of more sense for me during an activity. On this run, I didn't bring any with me because it was only an hour. So I, I feel like that's a good benchmark if I were doing more than one hour at a time to make sure I'm getting in kind of 30 grams of sugars per hour. So that's what it did with the patch. Now, in addition to that, you can do and log additional workouts in the Gatorade app and kind of like have it give you recommendations and guides for fueling both during and after the run. After the run, whether I use the patch or not, it always tells me get 19 grams of carbs in within 30 minutes of your run. Kind of like uh, a general rule that a lot of people kind of follow anyway. Try to get about 20 grams in in the first half hour after a run because your body's like thirsty for protein. So um, that made a lot of sense for me. But then I didn't kind of like, you could schedule a run and tell it like what you're planning on doing and it will give you some nutritional and uh, fueling guidance. But what I did instead was I gave it the data from the run that I did the following day. I ran through some of the hills in Guttenberg. So it was an, a harder, easy run. Easy for the most part, but there were quite a bit of hills and it was raining and pretty intense out there weather-wise. So I ended up running a little bit harder. I knew that was gonna be a longer run. So I did bring 17, uh, 12 ounces of Gatorade Endurance Fluid and um, one gel with me for the run. Uh, and so that's what I ended up bringing and I consumed all of that throughout the course of the run. But here's what Gatorade, so let's, now we can compare like kind of what I thought I needed for this run and what Gatorade said I should have brought for this run. First, it said I should take about 63 grams of carbs before the workout, like in the hours um, bef between like when I wake up and when I do this workout. And I don't think I quite got that many. I had a couple of granola bars on the way driving down to Guttenberg. So I maybe had 20 to 30 grams of carbs in my system at the time. So maybe I would have felt better if I went, bumped up all the way to 63. Like if I had a full breakfast and then had the granola bars on the way, that maybe would have got me there. But it seems like a lot in either event. Uh, but then again, if you think about it, it's like a bagel and then a couple of granola bars. So it's not, it is a lot and it, and it isn't. Um, again, it said, give me to, that I should take four ounces of fluid in. I'm gonna count the coffee that I drank on the way as that four ounces of fluid. And then it said I should take in 20 to 45 grams of carbs during the run. And the run was an hour and just about an hour and 45 minutes of pretty much easy running. I ended up taking between the um, 12 ounces of sport drink and then the one gel that I had, I had a Univet gel that ended up being about 48 grams of carbs. So I'm all actually on the high end uh, of what I was saying that I should take in for it. And I felt like that was a good amount. I was more thirsty than I felt like I needed gel. So like, you know, maybe I just needed more fluid and not necessarily sugars, but it was a good amount of sugar for me to have for, for the run. And I just felt fantastic. I felt really just effortless throughout most of the run, even on some of the uphills. So I felt like, you know, fueling wise, I was in a good spot and, you know, overall where my body was in terms of the workouts for the week, you know, I was in a relatively rested uh, state uh, for, for an easy run. So the, the run went really well. And then again, said I needed to take in 19 grams of protein in the 30 minutes after the run, which I definitely didn't do because I was I dropped off the car to get oil changed at my Uncle David's shop. And so afterwards, I was talking to Uncle David and Cheryl for a little bit. And then I drove home. And between those two things, that's definitely way over 30 minutes. The thing is, it didn't give me hydration recommendations. But if I go off of, you know, the yesterday's uh, 36 ounces per hour, according to that, I should have brought, I guess, like, 60 to 70 ounces of fluid 
which is a lot, a lot of fluid. I brought 12 and I probably could have used 16 to 20 and that would have like been a good amount of liquid to have. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure that I necessarily needed to have that much uh, fluid on board. And here's where I think feel like the fluid number is really weird. It seems to be that they're recommending you take in as much fluid as you lose. And I feel like I'm not sure exactly where they're getting that number from, or maybe it's just a coincidence for me because I'm a low sweater or, or whatever the number is, but it just seems like the one in one out rule is really outdated science if that's how they're basing it. If they're basing their fluid recommendations intake based on your fluid loss estimations, I feel like that's been an approach that's been debunked for like three, three or four decades. Um, so like, I'm not sure that that, that fluid number is, is quite correct. So that's a number that I'm just going to kind of discard because it just seems way off to me. Um, and I'm going to rely on my experience for that one just because I, I, number one, I don't want to carry that much fluid for an hour and 45 minute run. And two, I've never felt like I needed to carry that much. Um, as far as the sodium that I took in, if we're going off of the 351 gram, milligrams of salt per hour, um, I did not hit that mark for today's run. For today's run, I had um, the Gatorade Endurance floor, formula um, that had 310 milligrams uh, in the 12 ounces of uh, fluid that I had, 310 milligrams of salt. And then the gel that I had had 80 milligrams of salt, but it also did have some potassium in there as well. I'm not sure if that kind of like satisfies um, the electrolyte replenishment requirement, but if we're just going on sodium, I was a little bit shy of, of the recommendation. I should have had closer to, I guess like 600 um, milligrams of sodium just to do some rough math, but I had closer to 400. So I was a little bit short and maybe that would have helped me feel even better during the course of this run, or maybe it would have helped me recover a little bit faster too. So that's something that I'll keep in mind is uh, just to make sure I'm getting in enough salt during my runs. And it seems like a lot of gels don't have as much salt. So maybe I will rely a little bit more on fluids during the summer. Maybe I will carry a little bit more liquid volume with me. Um, but it gives me a good interesting point to kind of like tinker around with as I have some long runs coming up, I have some workouts coming up where I can really start to kind of play around with some of these numbers, especially on some of these hotter summer training days. Uh, as far as uh, going forward with the Gatorade uh, app, you could like also pair a, a sleep tracker used with it and it kind of can borrow data from your Apple Health. So if you've got lots of stuff coming into Apple Health, um, it can pull numbers from there and kind of get a more full picture of you. And then it'll give you like sleep recommendations and nutrition recommendations. But for me, I, I feel like other than using it, like you get two in a pack. I use the one, here's the other one. Uh, it comes in a, a little two pack. Um, but uh, you know, other than using these, I'll probably use another one on a workout day just to kind of see if I have like a long threshold day. What is my body doing sweat wise when I'm doing a threshold workout or if I'm running marathon pace miles, just to test that out. And then use those as kind of like, here's some starting points to tinker around with my own nutritional needs and see how I feel about it rather than, you know, running with, I don't, I don't think that they intend for you to run with these things like regularly. Um, and they're $25 for a two pack. So that I don't, they're not priced for you to be using it regularly. I do think you're supposed to use it kind of like to kind of check yourself every once in a while and see if you need to make any adjustments. So those are my thoughts on the Gatorade sweat patch. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions or critiques or compliments for it. I'd love to hear what you guys think about it. Um, I think it's kind of useful. I don't think everyone needs to get it, but if you've been flustered with fueling strategies, then maybe it's something worth looking at. Uh, that's all I got for today, everybody. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?